the Voivode office saw this. Ah, uh, okay, this meeting is being recorded. Okay, that's fine. So we had uh, a lot of those applications and the Voivode office, of course, they saw this uh, trajectory, they saw this uh, amount of applications, and of course they needed to um, do some checks, because there are a lot of structures that are involved in this Voivode office. They look into files, they look into employers, they look into people, and one of the stages of that application is actually the check of background of some candidates. We are working with a lot of different uh, countries countries and a lot of different people around the world and um, uh, that means that a lot of applications are coming. So right now um, in the Voivod office there is a, um, an additional check of some of the applications. Just imagine like when there is, um, I don't know, a beauty salon and uh, the average amount of uh, clients in this beauty salon is around, I don't know, 100 people per month. Let's, let's imagine that, right, for even numbers. And uh, for some reason, they like do some marketing strategy or something like that, or word of mouth coming. And for some reason, the average amount of clients in this beauty salon becomes uh, 500 people per month instead of 100. It would draw some attention of uh, some governmental structures, maybe police, maybe some tax uh, companies that are uh, involved in this business right to check if this company is really all right if this beauty salon is all right what are the kind of clients that are that they are involving in their business and such so this is the same situation because the amount of applications has risen in the last few months uh, in the last i would say six months maybe uh, the attention of military police the attention of government was also attracted to the Voivode offices. They were kind of interested, what kind of people are coming to the Voivode office? Why do they want to apply? Why do they want those work permits? What are the employers in there? And what is basically involved in there? So there is an additional check from the Polish government itself. So basically they are checking themselves and they are checking the applicants that are coming to the Voivod office. Uh, from my experience, I can say that it happens around three to four times a year. So it's like every quarter they have this kind of check uh, when they take a bunch of applications from the all pool of applications and they check people for uh, some background. Maybe there were some violations made by other people, but they saw like similar names uh, because we cannot have all original names. I'm sure that there are a lot of Alexandras Donchenko all around the world, and some of them might be not as good of people as I am or or vice versa. So they are checking some of applications and it takes time. So we received a lot of uh, messages basically from the Voivode office that some of the applications were delayed and the whole amount of those applications makes it a little bit more difficult to process them in time. But we gave all the information that we have uh, to Bruce, to our other agents and other representatives and other people who are applying individually. So all of those people are aware of this situation. And um, the reason, the particular reason for every single check is not known to us because the Voivode office, they don't have to make us aware of those reasons. But as I said, in our experience, it happens several times a year and all of the people that are applied, uh, that were applied in the past, all of them received the applications. I have many uh, examples like those, but those names wouldn't tell you anything probably, but there is a one particular person whose name is Godfrey Katende. He was um, the client of my Who? colleague. Who? What Godfrey? is that? Mr. Godfrey. We Godfrey were, Katende, yeah, yeah. yes, we were discussing it with you, Bruce. Yeah, he yeah. was the client of my colleague, Tatiana, and uh, he was one of those people who were in the last check, last, um, last autumn, last fall. Yeah. yeah. And 
and he was one of those people who also received his invitation and had his uh, documents, supporting documents and everything like that. So maybe you know that name, and maybe you can um, relate that name to your situation. Um, sorry, could you, could you please mute your microphones? <laughs> Ashramatic, please can you mute yourself? Yeah, there is another. There can you mute another... yourself, please? Please, everyone must mute himself or herself. Okay. There is another uh, message in the chat. If in the working permit application state that you will start working on the 1st of September and by that time date your work permit isn't yet. Uh, well, this uh, all of those dates that are uh, presented in the job offer letters and the work permit invitations, they are preliminary. I already explained this to Bruce and I think that he already gave this information to you, but it's not... Um, difficult for me to uh, to say it again. All of those dates are preliminary because there are some uh, timeframes for every action, of course, but it um, depends on the um, embassy interview date that every single candidate gets after they submit their work permit invitations to the e-consulate system. This is what some of those people, some, some of the present people have already made. Uh, there are uh, some people who are only um, waiting for their work permits to come, but this whole thing with the dates, is it depends on the embassy application date and both employers and Voivode mm -hmm. office and all of the structures that are involved in this process, all of them are aware that these dates depend on the embassy date uh, specifically. So there would be no negative consequences if those dates don't match. Because as I said, everything uh, is going to be uh, connected to the embassy date. Uh, what happened to Mr. Svaibulubega is that he also had some uh, dates uh, that were kind of expired by the time that he had his um, embassy date. But as you can see, everything happened smoothly. He's in Poland now. So um, as I said, there would be no negative consequences about that. Uh, all the dates will be refreshed uh, as soon as uh, you receive the uh, embassy application date and the visa approval, of course. So they, they all will be refreshed and um, adjusted to the current situation. So no need to be afraid of something, that something happens about that. I hope I cleared it out. <laughs> uh, okay, the next question. So there is no specific period which that document check takes by the Polish government. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, there are no specific uh, timeframes for that because sometimes they take like 500 applications and it takes like a month or two. Uh, and sometimes they take 2000 applications to be checked and it also extends the period. Sometimes they check 100 of applications. So it's not consistent basically. So we cannot give you like the exact date when this check is over. And to be honest, it's kind of ongoing. It's just sometimes those checks get a little bit more scale, sometimes a little bit less of a scale. So uh, as I said, there are no specific time frames, but you know, every time, and Bruce knows very well that every time I receive any documents from the other side, from the government, I send them without any hesitation. As soon as I receive them, my priority is to make uh, everybody aware that some of the documents are out, some of the proofs of applications are out, and work permits and everything. So as soon as I receive them, I send them to Bruce the same day, mm -hmm. so, so he can spread uh, those documents among amongst the uh, the applicants. So this is basically what happens. And I uh, give you my word that as soon as I receive those applications, um, then I will send them the same day. Okay, the next comment, uh, uh, talk about the requirements a person needs to take to an emergency of UAE after getting the work permit basically in Dubai. What kind of emergency are you referring to here? Talk exactly. about the requirements a person needs to take to the the requirements you mean embassy maybe 
ni merge so after getting a work permit basically in dubai i don't understand your question unless if you come and ask it and uh, um, on top on top of that uh, sandra is it okay if you really if you have your statistics there oh, i mean the other document you read all of those people at least seven names i think there are seven names that are whose work work permits are delayed Uh, so that okay, I will need a minute to to open that because yes. it's, it's so not that in we, front we of are, me. We are on the on the same page because some people here they might think ah maybe Bruce did not apply for me or maybe you can even mention the date when it was applied. Yeah, so that let me you, open yeah the document and I would read the names of the people that are currently under the check. So yeah, those are the embassy people don't change in the way of working as in as in they keep denying people visas and some people don't get appointments and the work permits expire what will be the way forward okay i will answer that question in a minute but i let me read the names of the people that are uh, under the check right now according to the information that we got from the voivode mm -hmm. office so those people are faith nantume uh, samuel baker um, Miriam Namata, uh, then it's uh, Yustia Sesazi, Ivan Muriowa. I'm ho I hope I'm not butchering the names. <laughs> Ivan Muriowa. Yes, Ariab Kobwemi, Ivan Wulufu, and Ruth Kikonko. So those are the people that are currently in the check according to the uh, lists that we got from Uh, from the Voivode office, and we are expecting uh, those applications to come in the nearest future. Of course, as I said, as soon as I receive them, uh, we will be sending those to Bruce and he will be spreading them around. Um, so uh, the next question, is it possible to switch to another country? Because according to what I saw, Livenstead does operate in Lithuania. Yeah, uh, we have another service for Lithuania, of course. I recently talked to Bruce about it and we had some details uh, about it. The only thing you can switch if, you, if your application hasn't been um, put to the Polish process yet, you can come to the Lithuania process. The only thing is that it is a different kind of application. Of course, it will be done for residency for two years instead of a work visa. And because of that, there wouldn't be um, employment involved for now. I've already made for, you, for them a video. And uh, I think most of them are positive about it. So. I'm going to to meet them on 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 what and we explain to them more further details about it. On that, I think I'm going to ask you one more to read for those who are, who are waiting for their work permits. They are not out because I see Namaganda Sharon is saying I have not had my name. Is it okay to those who who are waiting for their their work permits? Yes, some of the applications are yeah. pending right now. They are also in process. They are yeah. also applied. Also those ones whose work, work permits are pending, yeah. All yeah, of let me read, okay. Let me read those because there are some, some pending. It's uh, George Atsu, it's Sharon Naginda, it's Nathan Segawa, uh, Nasura Nanziri, Dorothy Nakatogo, Uh, Mugisha Wilbroad, Ashrafu Webembezi, sorry, uh, Swele Abdullah, Bernard Anecho, and Penlo Ayabazibwe. So those are the ones that are pending at the moment. They aren't in the list of the check that we received, but they are in the process. And because there is such a check ongoing, this process, some of the applications that aren't in the list of check can also be a little bit delayed because the amount of work they are doing right now at the Voivode office is actually um, has been greater than before. So um, we receive, we uh, expect to receive those applications in the nearest future. Some of proofs of applications are also coming. And as I said, as soon as I receive those, I always send them to Bruce without any delays, uh, without any hesitation. 
Uh, so yeah, we have around uh, like what 12 or, or 15 applications at the moment pending and uh, pending or delayed. So uh, so yeah, they will be uh, processed as soon as possible because they are in the office right now and we are constantly uh, in touch with those people because some applications come, some applications are being made and such. So this is like an ongoing process. It comes back and forth. So it's not like uh, we only apply like a bunch of applications and then we just sit and wait because they are coming and going. And as I said, it's just coming back and forth. So somebody is also commenting that my worry is in case the embassy people don't change, change the way of working as in they keep denying people visas and some people don't get appointments and the work permits it's expire. That will be what will be the way forward. So first of all, to answer this question is that our uh, communication with Bruce started uh, last year from um, our communication, our um, recommendation not to go for a shorter work permit invitation because we are aware of uh, this um, well lottery you can you can say lottery system but it's not lottery it's actually a random uh, drawn system so because it is random we never know how they are going to give the uh, appointments and unfortunately this situation is not unique to to Kenya it's not unique even to Africa every single uh, embassy works in the same way either it is malaysia or it's pakistan or it's india or it's uh, saudi arabia or any other country that is involved with the embassy so the system is the same it is like a box of papers where you put your application basically and then a random digital ai hand just comes and picks some of the application from it so they can be given the um the appointments at the embassy and because we never know how long it might take for the application to be drawn for the for the embassy appointments we um advise to go for two or three years work permit invitations that's how you are secure on the first place that's how your waiting time is not jeopardized by this very random system you know that your work permit invitation is valid long enough to be in that system to be drawn there and to have your work permit invitation um, invited to the embassy and to fit in the visa period right so it is enough two or three years it is enough for the application um, but of course sometimes well, very rarely uh, but sometimes it happens that uh, work permits get uh, expired while waiting for the embassy appointments but it only happens if your work permit is one year and it only happens uh, it, it had only happened last year if i am uh, fully aware of it uh, so i think that in the nearest future the amount of applications will be a little bit more with the embassy a little a little bit more dates would be released i think that you already saw the positive dynamics that we already had in the last few months with the embassy appointments uh, i know that for you it is hard to assess that because you don't see all the applications uh, but we work with a lot more people and uh, we have seen the positive dynamic in every single embassy basically a lot of um, um, dates in embassy in india were given and in kenya as well and in Dubai and in in Saudi Arabia so uh, they are releasing more dates therefore more applications are getting appointments so I don't think that you need to be uh, concerned about that because as far as I know all the applications that Bruce makes are for two or three years so you are secure in that in that region uh, as much as we can do it as much as you can do it as well um, uh, okay, Sharon, uh, I would need to check the information, okay, and then I will share it with Bruce and, and he will update you, oh, 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 okay? No, you um, have already updated, you have already read her name. Uh, oh, oh, already, no, okay. No, no, it, was not, it was not read well, but it is okay, she had it. Okay, okay, great. It's just a lot of names, a lot of applications. I've Sometimes. seen also Chichoncho, you read it, 
Du Congo. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry because the names, you know, <laughs> they can be uh, they can be tricky to pronounce. Our uh, Polish and Ukrainian names are also much of a problem for people. So, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, all right. The next one for us. Who had our work permits? Uh, we joined drones for almost four months without embassy calling us. What could be the solution? Well, as I said, the system is random. So uh, all you can do is to wait for the uh, appointments to come. Um, from our side, from your side, uh, there is not something that I'm aware of that you can do to manage the situation. Um, so when your preliminary application is complete, when you uh, make your application on the embassy website, uh, the embassy is aware that such a person is holding the documents of a work permit and is willing to apply. So they are basically aware and uh, this is the matter of the time. Um, what happened to reapplying? Because the last I heard that there is that option uh, and it was to be a reason resorted to. You mean reapplying for the work permit invitation uh, once again for, for, for uh, a second one? Or please clarify because I'm not uh, sure that I fully understand what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, well, if I, if, I, if I heard it, I mean, if I understood it correctly, uh, is that the question is, can you reapply for a work permit? And the answer is yes. If there is uh, such a need to reapply for the work permit invitation, uh, yes, reapplying for those who are delayed. There is no need to reapply for those who are delayed because they are in the process. Every single person who is now pending or delayed will receive the work permit invitations eventually. So there is no need to reapply. There is no need to do something about it because basically they are just waiting to be released. So no additional actions is needed neither from you guys, nor from Bruce, nor from us. We are just waiting for the Voivod office and the Polish government to do their job, <laughs> basically, and to release those work permits invitations. That's what we are waiting for. And as soon as they are released, they will be delivered. I think that um, Mr. Anas and Mr. Elijah are going to receive their uh, they're packages already very Uganda. soon. They're already in Uganda. Yeah, they, need, they have to receive them very soon because they, they have been shipped. Uh, and I think that uh, they will do the preliminary application in the nearest future, right? <laughs> Sandra, they're already in Uganda. They know okay. hands. Oh, okay. That's, that's great. That's great. Then the, yeah. the, the next thing is to make the preliminary application on the e-consulate site. Yeah. Yeah. So, so ladies yeah, and gentlemen, we're... feel free to ask. She still has more 10 minutes, 15 minutes with us. Yeah, something like that. Feel free to ask any question because I don't want you to say, ah, you know, these people of Poland, we don't see them, she's here. <laughs> and even if you don't see them, I'm always here because whatever you say, you ask me, I always go to her and I ask her. Whether the message is bad, whether it is good, I always send it to her and she gives me what? answer a feedback because I want to, I already told you that I'm not an agent. An agent will never let you know this person. Am I lying? <laughs> of course not. Well, she will, there are, the there agent, are different. Just hide you, even if you hide the company, but you, you well know that I'm always singing about the company, encouraging you guys to do it by yourselves. So that's why I can pull her to come and explain these questions to you. So please go ahead and ask any question that you feel like asking. You guys who are annoyed because of maybe uh, work permit, the, uh, the explanation she gave, I mean, your work permits, the explanation I gave you is the same explanation, the voice, if you still remember, the same voice note she made is just the same voice she's here. You can go ahead and ask. Then maybe another thing, you can also comment about these documents of, of the, those people who have not paid for their documents. 
Yes, I, that's, you are reading my mind basically, Bruce, that I wanted to comment about uh, Mr. Elijah who paid for his second installment. And as you already know, received the documents, right? So there are uh, some people who aren't uh, very um, fast about making their second installments to receive the documents. And I didn't push it just because uh, we already have been working with Mr. Bruce for such a long time. And uh, we understand that life can happen to anyone. And some people were waiting uh, for the documents to come, for visas to come or something like that. Everybody has their own reasons. But the only thing is that those work permits wouldn't be valid for long if they aren't taken from the employer, you see? Because not right now, while they are lying down in the employer's office, their time has been expiring. And somebody who asked about what happens when the work permit expires is that, uh, well, there is a reapplication must be involved if you want to continue with that process. And for someone who hasn't completed their second installments, your time is running out, basically. So if you want to go for it, if you want to complete this process, and I'm sure that a lot of you do, a lot of you want to do it, because if you started it in the first place, this is something that um, you shouldn't call quits on. And if you are waiting for, I don't know, a sign from the above or a new moon or something like that it is time to act because it has been more than six months if i'm aware of your work permits just lying around the office of the employer waiting for you so you are stealing your time from yourselves basically because those work permits that aren't paid for now they aren't in the embassy system embassy is not aware that you want to apply please maria and maria can you please mute yourselves guys respect to maria and maria please can you mute yourselves thanks <laughs> so what i was saying is that you guys are just stealing the time from yourselves because even though your work permits are valid for three years as we already established that most of them are valid for three years, while you are waiting to make that second installment, the time is running out. And uh, the three years, it has already became two and a half years because you haven't been uh, completing those second installments to receive your documents, what you already paid for. They are just waiting for you lying around. So I encourage you to make those uh, second installments to Mr. Bruce so we can just ship them to you because in, uh, in case if you don't do this, those work permits just become expired. They become void and uh, what everybody is left with is employer is without the worker, you are without documents and without your money because all of those uh, installments that you already paid have been transported to the Voivode office. They did their job, they uh, issued the work permits and uh, they are already paid for. So um, the only logical and fair thing is for you to receive those documents because you have already uh, paid for them and uh, you know that if the documents uh, and when the documents are already issued, there is no um, situation where a refund can take place because as I said, the Voivode office has already done their job. There is no way we can demand such things from them. So the only logical thing to do is for you to receive those, uh, those documents. So please, if you have the opportunity, do it in the nearest future, just so that your work permits do not become expired and everything that you did, all the hard work, all the hard waiting that you did would be in vain. Uh, is it possible to predict how long the checks in the government office might take? Well, George, it, it is uh, difficult to predict for now, because as I said, sometimes they take like 100 of applications to be checked. Sometimes they take a little bit more and a lot of applications are in the process now. So the time frame is difficult to predict. No, uh, I, I think I think I think is uh, is trying to ask, do you know if someone has applied? For example, I think George, I, when, when did when did we apply for George Okum? 
George applied somewhere around April. April. So yes. his question, I think, is do you know how long it might take for his work permit, I think, to come out? Yeah, I, I understood that. Uh, and as I was saying, because of that check, additional check from the police and the, all of that thing, because of this additional check on top of work of uh, the Voivode office, the regular applications are also taking a little bit longer to be processed. Think about it as if you were, um, I don't know, at home cooking dinner, peeling potatoes and you wanted to peel 10 potatoes, but then your, I don't know, spouse or, or any other person came and uh, gave you two, uh, two dozen more potatoes. So you were thinking it will take me 15 minutes to peel 10 potatoes, but then somebody comes and gives you 12, 12 potatoes more. So the time expands for those potatoes to be peeled, right? I, I'm sorry for those uh, primitive uh, examples, examples but, <laughs> but they work. It's just how my mind works. I always think in, in associations. <laughs> so, so this is what I think and how I think. So it is easier mm -hmm. for me and I hope it would be easier for you. So when there is some work on top, it extends the time of doing the initial amount of work. And this is basically what happened here. Uh, so yeah, it might take uh, some additional time to be processed, but all of those uh, invitations, they will be issued eventually and will be given to you, especially for people who paid full. Uh, they are going to be delivered without any delays, without any waiting for second installments, nothing like that. So as soon as we receive it, we just send uh, the acknowledgement to Bruce that, hey, the invitation is out and we immediately send it to the receivers uh, as soon as all of the um, stamps and signatures are collected from the employer's representatives. So there will be no additional uh, delay with that. As soon as the world scan comes out, very soon the, the invitations and the whole document package will be delivered. That's uh, for somebody who pays in full. This is security for you as well. No additional um, cost, nothing like that to us isn't involved. We don't uh, request uh, anything basically apart from the fee that you already give to Bruce uh, and eventually to us. All of the other fees, as you know, they are paid to, uh, to embassy directly because what we cannot take money for what we don't do. <laughs> and mm -hmm. we don't give visas, embassy does. So this is basically what happens. You are all aware of it. Mm. So any further questions? Yeah, I think that there is something coming to live in study. Is there any suggested period given to delayed work permit to call it a fail? Uh, and just in case it falls, what is the way to forward by leave and study. What you mean, uh, delayed work permit? You mean the ones that you are waiting for right now? They all will come uh, with um, the amount of time that it's supposed to be. So if the work permit is delayed, it doesn't mean that it would be the same situation like for people that aren't paying their second installment. So their time is running out because they aren't receiving their work permits invitation. The ones that are pay, pending or delayed by the Voivode office now will not be shortened. If it was something that you were talking about, I think that this is the answer. They will not be shortened. They will come exactly as they should. Is there any way of submitting documents to the Kenyan embassy without entering the draws? Uh, you mean like, to receive an appointment from the get-go. Uh, I am not aware of such things. <laughs> so uh, I, I couldn't, I'm not uh, an embassy worker, so I couldn't answer that question. If there's something like another way around, there is only the procedure that is known to us that you need to make the preliminary application online and then wait for, for the appointment. So this is the estimated um, process that is approved by the embassy. Okay. 
Yeah, Any, anyone to summarize for me, please, so that I can catch up. <laughs> this uh, meeting is being recorded, I believe. Uh, this, so this meeting has been is is being recorded, so you get uh, you get you get it from where it started until where we 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 shall end it from. So don't worry. Isn't there any way or, or companies, those who plan to employ us, help in securing visas? Uh, believe me, we have been dealing with this for a very long time. But the problem is not with the employers. Uh, the problem is with the embassies. Uh, even if the employers are going to give some notice to the embassies that they are aware of those uh, workers and such, the thing, uh, the fact that they, the employers and work per and voivode offices are issuing those work permit invitations, it already says to anyone who, um, who considers it that the employer is aware of the worker that is going to come. They are willing to employ this person. So this is reason enough for the embassy to consider that. And as far as I know, they just do not receive any further communication. They don't accept any further communication from the employers or third parties that are involved or the workers and applicants themselves because they already have the information that is needed. There is a specific reason why you uh, fill in the application online and why it has the certain fields that you need to fill in. All of those fields have been created by specialists uh, and uh, the embassy workers, and they're all involved. Uh, Maria, 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 please behave. They all involve uh, making embassy aware of those applications. So as soon as this application is submitted to the embassy, they are aware and no further proof is needed from either side, except for receiving the original documents as soon as the uh, interview comes, as soon as the interview comes, basically okay. like that. Oh, 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 okay, M um, Sandra, there is something I want to, to request in front of these people, I've requested it and I've requested it from Aral. Maybe these people, they think I don't request it, but now I want to request it in front of them. We know some companies that contact the embassy and say, for example, hello, our dear excellence at the embassy, for example, we really need Sharon Najinda to come and join our team. We are lacking her. Please, can you help us and uh, give her appointment? Or can you please give her a visa to come and work? And this scenario has really worked for some of your competitors or our competitors. Yeah, I understand. I've, asked, really I've that. asked this one from Alal. I've asked it from you. And I've tried it because these same people here, they meet such people who are actually telling us the same thing. And the, that trick has really worked for, for people. Why we cannot use it? We are trying. All I can say for now is we are trying, really. We have been doing it for months. We are uh, in the process of involving new employers that are more willing to do it. Uh, we are giving other uh, requirements to the new employers that we are hiring right now and we are uh, establishing communication right now that if they don't do it, basically, it might be the reason why we don't uh, cooperate with them. So this, because of you, Bruce, and thanks to you, Bruce, and all of you uh, beautiful people here and all of your applications, uh, is that uh, we have been um, using this voice that it is needed to basically put the uh, standards a little bit higher for the companies that we cooperate with right now. So when we are finding new partners to work with in Poland, it is one of the questions that we ask to them as well. 
Do you do that? If they say that they don't, it's going to be another stage of consideration if you want to work with them. So, uh, of course, uh, everybody is interested in such a thing because they have received such comments that it has, has worked for somebody. Uh, but we also have the other side of the coin is that it didn't work. It didn't work for somebody who received the same treatment, who received the same um, like uh, messages from the employer, like, hey, we really need to uh, employ this person, so please give them visas. Why it happens? Because they also see into the background of the candidates themselves. So it's not the make it or break it uh, condition that uh, allows people to get visas. You see, if it was the make it or break it condition, we would go an extra mile to secure such a thing. But of course, it's not the 100% reason why somebody gets rejected or approved. Uh, there are a lot of reasons and it is a combination of them why somebody gets uh, approved or, or denied. So uh, what we can do is to evolve is to go further. And this is what we are trying to do basically every single day. And your comments really help us with it. So uh, I will make sure to transfer this information and those um, requests to my supervisors as well. And we are working on some new geographical positions for the future. First of them was Lithuania for somebody who would like to just relocate, who doesn't really uh, need the employment. Uh, Bruce will tell you a little bit more about that in the future as well. Some more details, I've sent them to him. And uh, we are working on some new countries. So in the future, maybe uh, there will be another opportunity. And we do not uh, stand on what we only have. We are trying to develop. But as you know, as you might think, it's not as easier said <laughs> as done. So it takes time and effort to secure such positions. We didn't just appear uh, in the um uh, in the environment of uh, this uh, relocation of this employment someday. It wasn't like a big bang in, in the space, like like a snap and everything appeared. It was hard work to establish that thing in the first place. So everything uh, needs to be done. Um, accordingly, right, step by step. Uh, but of course, Bruce is one of our uh, most reliable associates and uh, everything new, everything important that we have, uh, he knows about it amongst the first. This you can be sure about, of course. We are always cooking for you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Peeling those now, potatoes. Now, like, like Luthania, it is, it is red, so we are putting on a plate. So as yes. I told you already in the small meeting we had, I am um, including George. I can see George is, is willing actually to, to, despite that he's waiting for the work permit, before it is out, George wants also to try that Luthania. So yeah, it can happen. It can so happen. So by there Monday, no by Monday, by Monday, by Monday, I, I think I'll be ready with a first batch. By Monday, by the end, by before the end of next week, I'll be having my first batch that we are going to test with. Let me break the record and be the <laughs> one to 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 test the the the, the models. Yeah, we so, are we are waiting for it actually because we understand that some people they don't really need to be employed. They just need to relocate, and this is the chance that can be uh, taken. And the success rate is uh, higher because it is a different kind of application. Is residency from the get go? No need to deal with visas. No need to deal with in person embassy appointments. No need to go to a different country. A VFS Global is present in any country, basically, uh, and some countries even have several VFS um, 
uh, VFS offices where you can give your biometry. So there is, uh, it is more cost efficient. It is more uh, secure. You will have not one year of visa, but two years of residency. So for some people, it might be a solution as well. And also I need to say it, um, some people are coming to us and they say like, I don't care about anything that you give us. Uh, just I just want to go to my niece or brother or somebody who lives in Spain or Belgium or Netherlands or somewhere, I don't care how, I just need to be there. And um, if you are something uh, like that, if you need um, an opportunity to go to a different country, not specifically Poland or Lithuania, this also may be the solution for you. Uh, yeah. And Sandra, uh, last but not least, I can see the time is going. Can you please reply to uh, Mr. Yosia? He has a question here. I, th I don't yeah, know. Let, let me let me see it. Um, which one exactly? Could you could you re read it? He's saying, um, um, you see, yeah, we have people who applied as factory workers, but given job offers as con contra construction helpers. If yeah, each I can and, see it. Uh -huh. if each and every job which isn't in the line with your work permit. You must get a new one. My question is, me who will be coming in Poland for work, will I have to get a new work permit which takes almost three months or why? Oh, wait, I don't understand the question. Uh, I understood the question. I understood it. Uh, you don't have to go for another work permit if you don't plan to change the company. So you see, when you have your work permit, there is a specific employer that is mentioned in that work permit invitation. It can be any kind of employer who we work with. So as long as you work for this employer, it may be a different position. You may get a promotion. You may get something else. Uh, you don't need to change your work permit invitation. But at the, mo at the moment, there are things that shouldn't be worrying us. One, um, this guy should should serve as an example, Swai Burubega. Swai Burubega got a job offer with a work permit with the different jobs. But yes, right now, with, and with a different pay. But as I talk right now, he was snubbed. He, they got him from the airport. And he was changed from the company where he was going now, actually is earning even better salary. He told us that he was supposed uh, according to our contract, he was supposed to earn 3,500, but as I talk right now, he's earning 4,500. So yeah, this is one point. And the second point is that uh, once you change the job, uh, if you do change the job, the company that hires you, the, same, the next company that hires you, they will also take care of your documents as well as a part of it, because um, you will already be legally present in the country. You will have all the rights to be present there. So uh, in order to manage that legal employment, they will do it for you. The majority of countries will uh, work with the Voivode office on their side and uh, provide you with a refreshed work permit invitation. But of course, the one that you will already have will give you the right to work in Poland in the first place. And what is written there as, as per uh, the employer goes, it can be manageable. So there is no need to go for another work permit invitation. If you, even if you change the employer, it will be taken care of. It is negotiable. You will be given a lot of information about that. And uh, as soon as you are there, uh, you will be aware of all the conditions and everything like that. So for now, no need to worry about that. This is not something that you need to think about at this point. All right, um, I am really happy to be here, but I have another meeting in three minutes. Uh, I kind of thought that it's going to be delayed a little bit. So I gave myself a gap of 15 minutes in case it does. But now really, I need to go for my next meeting, which is in three minutes. Okay, so Sandra, it was really thank you so much to be here. <laughs> yeah, Sandra, thank you so much. And uh, thank you for dedicating this time to us. We love you. I see some positive comments. I don't know whether you see them that someone is, is wishing to. This is uh, Rosemary. You know, Rosemary, she just recently got her work permit in, in Abu Dhabi. 
she's yes, hoping sir. to see you soon indeed she will see you soon so <laughs> yeah. ladies, and, ladies and gentlemen we have to let sandra go and we can stay for a little bit if i told you have any question to ask me i'll give you like four, four five minutes more to ask me if not then we can call it a day until tomorrow in questions and answers yeah, and uh, as Bruce has already said, if you have uh, some concerns or something like that, just uh, place them in your chats or wherever you communicate with Bruce. And of course, all of that questions, they come to me. I answer them as soon as I can, and Bruce just forwards you the information. So we are a complete uh, uh, like back and forth channel here. Yeah. Uh, and uh, all the information that comes, it comes from me. And I get this information directly from the supervisors and the Polish government itself. So all of this information is uh, present here and uh, it is um, taken care of. So yeah, thank you so much to everybody who was active, who were listening. And uh, I hope that uh, we will see more applications soon. And uh, I also hope that I will be able to send uh, those applications that are pending right now as soon as possible. Yeah, that is my my humble prayer because people are getting scared here. You know, you, you know, a human being is a human being. Of course, but I'm I happy that you read their that. names. I'm happy that you read the, their names. Now they are 100% sure that it is the problem is not me and the problem is not you, but the problem is with the government and police that hold, held their, their what? Their, their, their work permits. Yeah, I wouldn't say that it is a big problem, but of course it is uh, an issue of some kind, but we can overcome it. It doesn't yeah. mean that everything stops here. So yeah. I just need you to be positive and patient and uh, you know maybe <laughs> there is uh, um, an old Russian proverb just take it as a joke that uh, everything that has been uh, promised should be waited for for three years <laughs> so, so this is this is a joke it's not it's not what is happening here but just uh you know to to break the ice so yeah thank yeah. you thank you uh, for having okay, me. Bye. okay bye. yeah i'm yeah. going to go to my next meeting bye bye okay bye bye sandra bye yeah so my people the sandra as I told you before that you are entitled to these meetings. It is not that it is by chance, you already paid for this. And um, among the, uh, uh, it is part of the money that you transferred that she has to save money for you guys. So unless you have any question um, concerning your work permit, they have read all your names to those people who are, who are still waiting for your work permits, they have read your names work permits that are, are pending they have read your names and also there is a new good opportunity for you guys also to explore if you really need this opportunity feel free to use it it is coming and you can also use it i, I know that's what george wants to ask me i saw your question in the inbox but I, I don't think i opened it yes this this opportunity you can even try to move with your wife or with your sister or with your brother <laughs> or with your mom. Maria, next time, when we are in, try to mute yourself, mm -hmm. Maria and, and, and Mary. It is a bad omen when someone is talking and then you are talking also and you are opening your what? Leave it like that. It, is, it should be like that. Like uh, Mutabazi, please mute yourself until you want to, to talk. And when you want to talk, also you raise your hand. So Mutabazi, Ashraf, please mute yourself. So this opportunity, it is very good. That how is it going to work? Because most of you people you have been telling me, ah, if Poland, they, they, they are not giving us appointment, please. It, please bring other opportunities. I've been mean, bringing your op other opportunities. Even this Ruthenia, we have been building it one by one, one by one. Actually, you have been asking me this and I've been advising them by the way. I have happened to be very instrumental to them because I'm guiding them here and there. Actually, I'm even teaching them some mafialism. 
I'm teaching them some wukodio of what they didn't know. I'm, I'm opening their eyes. I'm just opening their eyes. She has actually mentioned about it. So it is a blessing, but what I'm teaching them, so far now I can tell you that we have a very good opportunity, which you, I'm not forcing it to anybody, you might use because we have nothing to do what we need, we need to travel. So if you know that you want to use it, I think the first group of 10 people, if possible, I would first give it to my people who are in visa preparation because most of you have been there for a long time. I would just give it to you. Ladies and gentlemen, remember me, I don't just, well, Samuel Francis is here, is, is my witness. I don't just accept any deal. There's someone who brought a deal. I know probably it would have worked, but on the other hand, when I went deeper to internalize it, I realized that it was one very expensive of which there's no right now. Uh, someone who has paid over 6 million has been frustrated. Then you bring another deal of over 20 millions to go somewhere where it's only right. 2 millions. I had to chase this deal with one heart and you, I mean, I just chased it anyway. So I'm always fighting to make sure that we, you get the best deals. So feel free, start saving for this deal. If you can use it to go, please use it to go. Go and make money. Yes, Mr. George. Good evening. Good evening to you, how are you, my brother? Good, thank From you. Ghana. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> So I was in the meeting, I started with you, but I have to run away mm. uh, for, for duty reasons. Mm. And then I miss where Miss Sandra was reading names. So I believe you are recording, so. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll post this on YouTube, you, you feel, you hear, he read your name. Okay, mm. so. He read and, your name even, I asked when he applied for, even he mentioned the name when you applied for. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> So the next question, I believe you talk about it already. Uh, the Lutania, it's uh, <laughs> it's the opportunity that I've had uh, people talk about in YouTube. So it, I was very happy uh, to hear you talk about it. Uh, I've had a couple of people talking about it, and, and I searched also. Mm. I've, I've tried a couple of a uh, couple of applications. It's not uh, that easy. Uh, do a searching and then uh, try to see which companies uh, have uh, uh, visas for uh, outsiders and others. So, like I said, it was very. It, I was very uh, happy to hear that you, to hear you talking about it in YouTube as well. Since mm. uh, I have so much of my trust in you. Mm. So, uh, uh, lady, you know what I'm about to say already. Interested, and then uh, I I wouldn't be. I wouldn't hesitate if I can move all my family there. So, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it will be possible to move, but I'm not sure if you move with your daughter. You have a child. I have two boys. Then it will be so hard. You need yeah. to first one of you go, then your, your family can reunite with you. Uh, okay. You may not go with your children, eh? but later, mm -hmm. the, if you go with your, what you gonna do, you just put in, okay? Okay. Good enough that the work permit takes between two, two weeks to six weeks. That is one month and two weeks. Okay. So you apply if God gives you just in one month, for, for example, uh, and you may be two months and you get your visa and you go, and then you can go and organize the apartment and then you put a family. And when you go, I don't know that you're married official or what, Officially, married officially. Uh, when you go there, you declare your papers. Yes. You declare yeah. yourselves at the government as married and you get also one up. Remember, you're going to go with a, with a, with a residence permit of two weeks, of two, of two years. Okay. So from there, then you can do what? You can declare yourselves. And then I'm sure when you get a job, you will get a job there as easy. Then you can put what they call family reunion and your children will find you. Oh, okay. That's Actually, I'm married best, officially. That's the best, 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 best deal that can move you with your husband or you with your wife. But mm -hmm. when you're applying, you don't need to show that you're married. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. And 
I will be running back for duty. Oh, okay, please. Uh, hello to the family, and then uh, we, we will see you later. Thank oh, you very please. much. Okay, my brother. Yeah. Yes, Mutabaz Ashraf. Ashraf. Hello. Papa, we appreciate the love and the support, and good evening, everyone. Good evening to you, my brother. How are you? I'm fine. Like Papa, I also wanted to be part of that uh, that project. Okay. Of but course, I... I was going to guide you in that light because I think it is better since this 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 deal you haven't applied for the other one. Yes. So it would be so easy if you switch. Of course, I, I, I that would be the best deal because with this deal, um, it is kind of um, of simple because it has more advantages than the other one. There is no going to the system. There's nothing like, you know, getting work permit, then you be there with the, in the system and you don't know when the system will consume you when you get appointments. So it is just a matter of getting up a work permit right now. You get it next week, you go to, to the embassy. Yes, Papa, I'll be in that project. Thanks yeah. so much. Uh, yeah, another no question ask was about age. I'm 22, age has no limit, right? No, age has no limit. So as long as you're 18 years and above. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate the love. Thanks yeah. everyone. Yes, JN, who is JN? Please, better mutake kamanyaga, mention your names. I'm Josephine Narule. Nalule Joseline, yes, Madam Joseline. Joseline Nalule, did you get your work permit or you are waiting for it? I got it, thank you. Okay. Ah, Nalule Mkujuki, you wanted even to get out of the deal. What, my papa? Yes. Why? Huh? Impatience. Impatience, I'm telling you, you don't need to be impatient. You see, Ogena Kutabu Kerio, Vume, Wajep Diyo, Atei Anwade Kuisao. You see? So sometimes patience pays. Bagamba sometimes ye wonya bingi. Nindye. Kato otade mu sentezo bali mu processing ya wakpamiti atewe chazi. Tize bivude mu zina sente kati ye bichi. So, Unangi, I have gained a mass on each of I, good evening, everyone. I, I wanted to know. You talked about that deal, but you didn't explain. I, I talked so about I, that. That deal you're talking about. That, that's why you do not enjoy, you, do, you don't want you people to, to visit my YouTube. YouTube, I have, this morning before I went live, I had to first go on YouTube and I put something for you. I told you at least don't spend two days without going to the YouTube because I might post there something and then you miss it. So this is a deal of Luthania. Luthania is a country that is near Poland. You are going to go as, um, as uh, people with the residence permit. Residence permit, if you know, if you don't know the meaning of residence, residence permit, it means that you are going to go with a, with a work permit. I mean, with a papers for two years. It means you have more three years to renew. And then after three years, two, more five years, then you can apply for permanent residence, then you citizenship. And when you get citizenship of that country, it means that you have finished everything. So, but the details I'm going to give it to you, especially about the money, how much you need, to, how much it will take you to, to be part of it. I mean, to, to, to how much and all that. The details I'm going to share it, still keep your eyes on YouTube. Okay. Okay, good. Mutabaz, you still have another question or you need to, to put down your hand? Maria is saying, beg, I beg your pardon. What pardon on what? Because I've talked a lot, madam. So, but anyway, I think we have been here for a long time. And uh, 
I just want to say bye bye Bukirwa Juliet how are you I see you are you are lost I can understand but God will create a way I know most of you guys I know you are down because of uh, appointments and by the let me tell you as I told you recently that appointments uh, visa appointments are not just um, scarce but they are just blocking them even getting appointment for for countries like uh, like uh, France like Italy like Spain we, there's our sister who is applying tomorrow at the embassy at the embassy tomorrow she's applying for tourism uh, and we are the one who built her her bank statement by the way she's um, applying tomorrow and guess what getting an appointment we had to pay money 300,000 actually she looked for appointment appointment just a normal appointment online appointment and she could not get it guess what myself i told her just go to the embassy and ask for the what and see what could be the problem maybe the the, the website is down she went and finding out as Carl gave her a contact to call that her contact so they referred her to another contact to call to get that contact they told her if you need our appointment, the appointment that are there are reserved for only sick people. I don't know how they know that someone who is applying is sick or is not. Because when you are applying, you have to first find an appointment and then you apply. But because they're stupid enough, they don't know that we can think beyond their, their knowledge. They said that uh, the, appointment is, the, the appointment that are there are only for sports and sick people. But if you need an appointment, a first appointment, then you need to pay something like 200, I mean, 250 to 300,000. But I think for her, she paid, I think 250, not 300. But they said they charged between 250 to 300,000. And indeed, when she paid immediately, she got appointment immediately. They just opened the portal, immediately the books of first and closed it. That is how far the ma mafiaism has gone. So you people who are annoyed that Poland is blocking the, the appointments, it is not only Poland. It is all the, 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 the embassies. So we have two people who have actually booked at a pay. One, you know him, is called Omobito, Simon Omobito. Also, he had to pay. Because here I don't hide anything because we are we are family here. Omobito Simon, he had to pay money. Hey, this thing is going to the website to get appointment. I'm, it is not, I was not supposed to say that because I'm going to post it. So, but anyway, we are team no, no secret. He will know it, no problem. But he had to pay that money. So guys, if you are getting mad of Poland, just know that even other countries are doing the same. But nevertheless, good thing with the Ruthenia that you are using what they call v, um, VFS. VFS, you just get an appointment, apply with VFS, then VFS will take your things to the embassy, which is far better. Therefore, I think I'm going to say bye-bye to you unless if you have any other question, but I want to say bye-bye to you and I find something to drink. I need to drink something. So, bye-bye. Any, any question? No. So, see you tomorrow in questions and answers. Uh, if you have any question related to, to, to Luthenia, um, first wait until uh, next week. Next week, I'm going to post another video that will have things like how much you need to pay, how you pay, and ETC and ETC. So let's wait until Monday. Don't bring more questions about Ruthenia because I'm still developing some some charges i don't want to, to make a, a miscalculation then i communicate something then you tell me ah then i need to change it then you, you say ah why did you tell me this now you're changing no i want to give something that is accurate 
what I know that when it is time to transfer the money to, to Ruthenia or to Poland, it is not a, going to be a problem to me. And this deal is not going to be so, because you know me, other people abusing me that me, I don't know money, I don't want to, to earn money, but as I told you from the beginning that I'm not much into, I'm not a money oriented person, no. Yes, I need money, but not so much. If I'm to put, to put money, I need to put something that will not pain someone. That's why the reason why I chased the deal of, of, uh, of uh, Francis Manje's brother and, and uh, someone from UK, it is because uh, it had something like a lot of money and it was involving a lot of Indians who are also rude and all that. I don't, I don't work with rude people. Because um, anyway, I love you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye.